Jesus. The word Jesus came from a Greek word, Jesus. And the Greek word Jesus was a Greek deity. And um, the word, as a matter of fact, the, the letter J was never in the original Hebrew language, nor the Greek language. J was never there. The, even today, the Hebrew alphabet has no J. The Greek alphabet has no J. The J was the last letter that was introduced into the English language late in the 1500s. And the J letter came because a Catholic monk by the name of Galilitos was experimenting with the eye and put the hook on the bottom of the eye and made it a J. And that's how the J letter came into the English language. So his name was never Jesus. His, his name was and is Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh saves. And if we remember, even in, 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 the, in the Gospels, when, when Matthew and Mark uh, talk about uh, the angel visiting Mary, and, and, and her real name was not Mary, that's the English word, but her true name is Miriam, and that's the Hebrew word. Um, when the angel appeared to her, he distinctly said, you will have a son. His name shall be called Yahoshua, meaning Yahweh saves, because he continued by saying, he shall save his people from their sins. So his name tells who he is. Obadiah Yisrael of the Hebrew Israelites in Chicago points out that one of the facts scriptures gives us about Israel in regard to their physical appearance is that Israel is described as physically looking like the sons of Ham in appearance. Ham was one of Noah's three sons. Shem and Japheth were the other two. Noah's descendants repopulated the earth after the great flood. Ham's descendants are traced to the families of Africa. Ham, Quam in Hebrew means black, hot, and burnt. Ham had four sons, Cush, Ethiopians, Cushites, and Nubians, Mizraim, Egyptians, and Kemet, and Phut, ancient Somalia. All four of Ham's sons and their descendants settled in and around the continent of Africa. This includes the so-called Middle East, which is also part of the continent of Africa. Ham's sons are the people of the African continent, the ancient Egyptians, Ethiopians, Somalias, Canaanites, etc. The Israelites are descendants of Noah's son Shem through Abraham. He is the father of the Hebrew Israelite nation. Abraham is the father of Isaac. Isaac is the father of Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, and these sons are the patriarchs of the Israelite nation. The 12 tribes of Israel are as follows, Reuben, Sibion, Levi, Judah, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Zebulun, Ishar, Joseph, Benjamin. The children of Israel were the children of Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Jacob's name was changed to Israel because he had an encounter with an angel. Okay? In the land of Canaan, where they lived, there was a famine in the land of Canaan. One of Jacob's son, who was Yosef, which we call today Joseph, Yosef was sold as a slave into Egypt. Being a Hebrew Israelite, he served Yahweh. He trusted Yahweh because that's what he, that's, he was brought up to love and serve Yahweh. He trusted Yahweh. And because while he was in Egypt of his faithfulness to Yahweh, he won favor with Pharaoh and all the people of Egypt. And so when Pharaoh had a dream and could not interpret the dream, they called for Joseph, Joseph. And Yosef came and he interpreted the dream and he made it explicitly clear to the, to the king that we're going to have 
some years of plenty we're going to have some years of drought he said but you know the years of plenty we go we, if we take all that we harvest and store it up we will have enough to take us through the lean years and the king was so pleased he said Joseph you're going to be in charge of my of, of all this um, you know taking care of all this and see that this is done and while Joseph was there his brothers forgot all about him because they sold him and their father didn't realize that uh, Yosef was still alive because they went home and lied to their father and said a wild beast killed him but Yosef his heart his mind everything was serving Yahweh and he won favor and his favor is what caused him to be able to reunite with his father and his brothers. His brothers, when they came down to get food, Yosef immediately knew it was his brothers, but they couldn't recognize him. Why? Because he was now dressed in an Egyptian apparel. He, you know, and, I mean, <laughs> they're black, black paper. He recognized his paper. Obadiah Yisrael of the Hebrew Israelites in Chicago points out that if Joseph and the Hebrews look like Donny Osmond, who portrayed Joseph in a stage play, his brothers would have recognized him easily among the black Egyptians. But Joseph's own flesh and blood brothers thought he was an Egyptian. The ancient Egyptians of Joseph's time were indeed what we know today as black. This is a fact attested to by many. When Joseph became governor of Egypt and he and and he went to Pharaoh after making acquaintance with his brothers went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh look my family my dad my my brothers they they, 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 they all uh, you know I want to bring them here because they they're suffering over there and and Pharaoh was just happy to get Yosef family down into Egypt and these were Pharaoh's words. Bring them and we will give them the best in Egypt. Hallelujah. And, and so Joseph, Pharaoh sent carts to transport Joseph's father, his brothers, his wives, their wives and their children. There were 66 people in all that left Canaan and went to Egypt. Hallelujah. But what happened is while Joseph was there he was the favorite to all of Egypt and all the nations around everybody knew Yosef because he was the man next to the king and uh, when the brothers came and they all settled there after Pharaoh died the new king did not know anything about Yosef he did not know Yosef so he did not very, didn't take to Yosef very quickly. And so Yosef had problems with him. He had problems with Yosef. In that, he found that these Hebrew people were multiplying too fast. So he says, you know what? We're going to do this. These people might just overrun us. They might, they might become more than us and then join with our nations next door and they will overrun us. They'll take us over. So he instructed the midwives. He said, every Hebrew woman that is pregnant and sit on the birthing stool, you make sure, you look and make sure that that child is not a male. If it's a male child, kill it. But let the female live. And the birthing women couldn't do it because Yahweh's spirit was in them. And they allowed the boys to be born and the girls to be born. And the king got angry. And he got angry and he says, no, they're multiplying faster than we are. So let us enslave them. That's how slavery began. That's where it all began. It began with those children of Israel. And Israel was was uh, Jacob's name who was changed to Israel. This is a historical depiction of the Jews during the Babylonian period. 
clearly showing the African racial origins that many believe originated out of Egypt and was followers of the Akhenation religion. This is a statue of the boy king, King Tut. This statue was found in his tomb among many of the treasures in Egypt during an archaeological excavation in 1922. Scholars say King Tut was on the throne of Egypt a few years before the Israelite Eurocentric Exodus. Christian world knows nothing about the real Jesus from the tribe of Judah, the Ethiopian who spoke Aramaic. According to Hebrews 7.14, the tribe of Judah, from whom whence Jesus or Yeshua, his Hebrew name, came, is a dark-skinned nation of people. However, as Europe prospered, it presented the global world with a white Jesus around the time when the Bible was being translated from Hebrew to Greek to Latin to English. Revelation 1.14 clearly states, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Jesus' head and hair were white like wool is merely referring to his hair texture. The only people on the face of the earth with hair of a woolly texture are known as those of the Negroid race, whose hair is in its natural state is like a wool of a lamb. If black people do not cut or comb their hair, it will eventually lock together and become woolly. The word Jewish, the word Jew, was never and never is in the old original scriptures. As a matter of fact, the, um, again, if there is no J in the Hebrew alphabet, how could you get the word Jew, or Joseph, or Jeremiah, or Jehovah. <laughs> it's impossible. It's highly impossible, you see. But um, he here, is, here is how this, this the word Jew, or Jewish, came into being. If we go back, and, and you see, everything that we say today is scripture based. Everything is in scripture. It, it, it's sad that many of us have not uh, gone into the research to really get the stuff, but it is recorded in scripture. And it says, if we go back to the book of Genesis, um, let me see if I could, I could, in the book of Genesis chapter 10, okay, verse 21, it speaks about the genealogy, okay? There was, um, Noah had three sons, Shem, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, <laughs> they said Japheth, but it's Japheth, okay? Shem had children, and out of his children, one of his sons was named Eba. And the word Eba means Hebrew. Okay? Now if, and, and we're talking about the 10th chapter. Now here in the first verse of the 11th chapter, it says, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. So what was it? Who were they? Hebrews. They were speaking Hebrew. The Hebrew language. Because <laughs> the offspring of Shem was a Hebrew. And if the earth was one language, one speech, then <laughs> hallelujah. It has Those to be folks Hebrew. that are living in Israel right now, they are not Hebrew Israelites. They are Israelis. They live in the land of Israel. But how did they get there? In the book of Revelation, we are told that in one of the letters that that Yahweh dictated to John on the Isle of Patmos to one of the churches. He says, I know you dwell among in the synagogue of Satan and there are those who say they are Jews, but they are not. The Jewish nation was never in existence till 1940. That's when the Jewish nation became a nation. It's all documented in the Encyclopedia Britannica. I read it there myself several times. It's there in the book. Okay? But here is the thing. When Yahweh took up our forefathers out of the land and scattered us all over the world, that land was rich and fertile. Everything remained there intact. The, the Hebrew scriptures, the scrolls, the sacred scrolls, and everything was there intact. 
At the time, it was not the United Nations. It was the League of Nations. They gathered up people from all over Germany, Russia, Europe, and brought them into the land. And they settled in the land, rich and fertile. And what happened is, when they got there, all the sacred scrolls, everything was intact. And so they set out to master the language of the Hebrews. And they learned it well, so well, that when they begin to unfold scriptures from the scrolls, to put it in book form, when they came to Yahweh's name, they said, the Jews said, the Jewish scholars said, the name Yahweh was too holy for sinful man to utter. So they removed it and replaced it with Lord, God, Adonai. And the nations that we have been scattered into are fierce. <laughs> Not only are they fierce, but they have taken everything away from us. They have stripped us of our, our, our identity. We no longer know who we are. We no longer know where we belong. Now we have other nations that come into this country and, and each one of them could trace their identity and each one could go back to where their roots are. Where do we come in? Where is our roots? Our identity was stripped away from us. Deuteronomy 28.65 And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Isaiah 5.13 Therefore my people are gone into captivity. Remember we are Yah's children, we are His people. Luke 21.24 And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Slavery, bondage, and captivity played a huge part in the children of Israel's history as they would be held as captives and shackled by the chains of slavery on many occasions. The Bible speaks of Israel's captivity and bondage in Egypt, Babylon, and Assyria. But to be able to identify the modern descendants of Israel would mean having to trace the people who were taken captive and brought by ships into bondage. Behold, the days come, saith Yah, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yah. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yah, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. The word Egypt, as we know it today, is the name of that continent. But it was never named Egypt in the Old Testament scripture. Originally, that name of that continent or that country was Mithraim. Egypt, if you look in a very good dictionary, you will see the word Egypt means a condition of slavery. And because slavery was the key element in that country, when they formed the New World and they gave the na New World names to these countries, they named it Egypt, associating, associating it with the condition. So, keep that in mind, that Egypt is a condition of slavery. Remember the children of Israel was in slavery in Egypt, okay? The Mithraim. The 68th verse, the last verse in that chapter says this is because we disobey and Yahweh will bring you back to Egypt which means condition of slavery by ships <laughs> on a journey I said you should never make 
again. You remember when Moses stood at the Red Sea and he stretched his rod and he said to the children of Israel, the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. That's the covenant that Yahweh made that they shall not turn back. But because they disobey, he's going to bring him back. He brought us back, ladies and gentlemen. There you will offer yourselves for sale as male and female slaves to your enemies, but no one will buy you. It's all in scripture. Our people, the true Hebrew Israelites, are black people because the scripture says we will be brought into slavery by ships and all over the world there is no one no people no nation on the face of this earth was ever taken into slavery by ships but Hebrew Israelites African people Deuteronomy 28:68 and Yah shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you according to verse 68 Israel will go into a repressive brutal bondage similar to what was experienced when held captive in Egypt only this time ships will be the major transportation method used to move the Israelites to their new dwelling places